Hello and welcome to another episode of Tech Fanatic Official, your honest guide to the cryptoverse. First of all, my thoughts and prayers with everyone who is in Ukraine. It is an unfortunate turn of events that's happening right now. And I know a lot of projects actually based there. So I'm wishing everyone there all the best. And I hope this situation gets resolved as soon as possible. Now, I've been receiving a lot of feedback on having some projects that are not GameFi only. And obviously, the channel is mainly focused on GameFi and Metaverse projects. But when I find cool projects as well and partner up with them, I'll definitely cover them for you. So that's one of them today, right stream. I'm going to talk about uh, the project. And basically, they're going to be a launchpad for film and TV content. So let's jump into it quickly. The ecosystem is going to consist of four different segments. So the first segment is going to be a launchpad where you have creators and that fund the field and the community will have ownership of the piece of that movie or content in terms of NFTs. They've got the NFT component, which is the second part where specially curated films and TVs um, and celebrities items can be sold and traded in the NFT marketplace. They've got an app, which you can see, you can basically review and watch the TV and content over there. You can also review the movie and for reviewing and rating and engaging with the show, you can get the token for this project, which is the right token. And you can use an exchange where you buy and sell the film ownership that you have uh, and the TV NFTs basically. So it has the content management, it has the streaming management, it has the launchpad for new uh, movies to be uh, invested and basically developed and also the NFT component. Now, jumping into how this project is going to work, because it's an interesting concept, there are a lot of problems right now with the existing movie industry. So the first problem is that a lot of the shows, and you probably are familiar, when they want to you know, go to the make, make it or break it situation, they have to pitch it to a network to get the rights and then make a series, for example, in the US, because in, they have to go to the studios, they have to go to the broadcasters, you know, to go to the brands. And these investors will be the source of funding. And it means, for example, you have to change some of the uh, parts of your movie, some of the uh, things that actually is the originality of your content. You have to um, wait for a while. Maybe you even have to choose who's going to play in the movie. So. And at the end of the day, you're going to get a small share as a creator because these studios are there to make an income as a business model. Now, the other problem is a lot of these contents are not getting fully monetized. So there's a licensing model that's currently existing and each country has their own licensing model. Again, the negotiation takes a long time and then the content is controlled by middlemen. In crypto, the DeFi is a revolution. The GameFi is now the next revolution. But we haven't seen so much in the movie industry, movie content management to benefit from the revolution. So that's where the project is actually targeting and where, where it's coming from. So for example, the solution they've got is the film and TV NFT component. And that's, how, that's like a unique selling point of the project, right? So every piece of the content is going to be unique and it's going to be original work in NFT. So if you think about it here, you're going to have the creator and the crowdfunding through the launchpad using stablecoin, Bitcoin, or the right stream tokens to create the movie. And they, each frame becomes its own NFTs. And then the content can be streamed on different platforms, such as you know Disney or Amazon, Apple, Netflix. And they pay for the right of streaming the movie, which is the monetization component. And then the content consumption also, which is people viewing, would be the view to end, people paying. And also people who are watching could uh, get monetization. And the money would be then distributed between the people who are investment, crowdfunders, the creators, and everyone else, because these NFTs will have that transaction component, the amount of ownership you have, and all the details is recorded on blockchain, which is verifiable. So. They're just going to an example, right? For example, they said that in day one, they mint an NFT for $10 million via fractional ownership. So the NFT divides into fractions and the script is completed. $1 million released for the writing. So there were $10 million for the fundraising. 
from the uh, creators and the people invested. One million dollar event for the script writing, two million event for the production, five million event for the filming, and then two million was for the post production and marketing. And then the film is finally released. So this is just how this is going to work. Now, RightStream, the solution here is they have the content as a service. So they're going to have the network of the streamers that they currently have. And they're going to use the content licensing to generate as much revenue as possible for the project or for any new movie. They've got the application. And the difference is that it's not like, I don't know, Amazon or others that um, when you go to different countries, you have different licensing. The classic example is even Netflix, that uh, some content in the US, for example, is not shown in Australia, or some content in Japan is not shown in Australia, for example, and vice versa. And some people use VPN to tackle that solution. But I've noticed even sometimes now these streaming services pick it up when you use VPN. So using the application like RightStream app, you can have it decentralized all over the globe and have the uh, addition to have everyone involved basically and not just a few select countries. And RightStream has a team that behind them, they've already shown how the content creation works, which I'm going to cover a bit later, but they already got two original uh, components, like how Amazon, for example, has their own original. So they've got Bitcoin Billionaires Club and the Kryptonites. One is a documentary about the movers and shakers in the crypto world. And then the other one is about the entrepreneurs basically talking about the projects and how they do the fundraising and how they go, I guess, through the VC investment. Now, this project also is showing for the solution right now, they have an annual re recurring revenue of $6 million. I think they had it also in the slides here. Yeah. So the traction is they've already got 82 hours of content and film and TV. They've got already more than 100 million consumers and they've got a team of 32 people. The revenue up until now, the recurring one has been around $6 million. So it's a proven, proven concept. It's not something that it's going to be tested. The product is already there. In fact, um, I'll cover it later, but there's a website called All Rice, and they are the one that, that were already doing the streaming part. And RightStream is now moving to the blockchain and bring it to the filmverse, basically, the metaverse for movies. Now, with the launchpad also, it helps you because for example, if I wanna make a movie and I don't have the funding, I don't wanna go to the studio, I don't wanna be a full-time producer and I wanna do it with a few people, I could basically um, get, the, get the investment so I can invest in a particular project or a particular film that requires the investment and own a share or piece of that. So they're basically decentralizing the investment as well in different movies. It's not gonna be only owned by huge studios. Of course, they can participate as well, but this opens the door for people who are interested genuinely in a particular movie, you know, particular artist or producer to also uh, make their own content. And also they have a share from that. So having that launchpad component that you know for other projects, this is now coming into the streaming service as well. And of course you could have them, for example, shown in metaverse, one of the use cases is you can watch the movies and streaming on the application, but also on different metaverse, you could watch it using the you know VR devices and all that. So that's also a use case for metaverse for people who are interested on how this works. Now, I'm gonna cover the roadmap, but basically the, the streaming is gonna be live in Q1 to 2022. So in the next few weeks, the content monetization is already live and I'm gonna cover who are the partners. And the launch pad for film and TV is gonna be co covered in the next two to three months for the project. Now, I would like to also cover the roadmap for the project. I'm not sure how more zoomed in I can go, but basically in the first quarter, they're gonna focus more on the mobile app. So they're gonna have the MVP for the closed alpha and um, the iOS compatibility. And the fact that you can earn a coin for rating the contents and watching the contents with a coin. In the second quarter in 2022, they're going to have the closed uh, beta testnet and move to Android as well. And you can also rate content not anymore just with coin, but also you can um, 
use a QR code. You can also have a seller wallet because you're gonna use the marketplace for buying and selling. And you can use EIP 1155 to mint content as NFT. You're gonna have the transfer ship for owners and the custodians for the NFTs as well. And of course, the crowdfunding platform, which is the launchpad part I just mentioned, is going to be also live for the sellers to create uh, NFTs for investment and attract the investors. So that's going to be in Q2, which is a very big component of the project. And in the Q3 of this year, they're going to have the MVP to have the open beta for using the right coin. You can also watch all rights NFT as a rental. Again, as I mentioned, All Rights is an already existing company, which I'm going to cover later, part of the rights stream, basically. They're going to be cross-chain as well for Ethereum. And in Q4, they're going to go uh, uh, in Binance as a cross-chain bridge. Sellers can sell and buy the NFTs in Q4, and then the trading component is going to happen more towards next year. So this is the roadmap they've got for the next few months and this year basically now in terms of the token utility and tokenomics the um, there are a lot of utilities actually for the token which makes me more excited because um, it's not for example like a game just doing a play to end they actually need the token to use all the utilities so the first one is token you use it for investments in the nfts which i just explained so you need to use the right token of course you can use stable coins and other components as well but probably you get better rates if you use the rights token. The first million rights stream apps that are downloaded will have 10 tokens built in, which can be used for watching content. You can pay with the tokens to watch the contents. Then you can do the partner streaming. So the partner streamers will be rewarded with the tokens. The view to earn also is gonna be there. When you rate, you get some tokens earned on your application. And premium producers and directors, when they join the studios, they're going to be getting incentivization via the right stream token. So there are a lot of um, utilities basically for the project and for the tokenomics. Now I'll jump into the website to cover the tokenomics in more detail for this. So the use of the tokens is going to be 16% for the business development component. This has been the, the fundraising that they've had. 8% is the cost of fundraising, 34% for technology, 13% for marketing, 13% for acquisition of content, and 16% for operations. In terms of the distribution, they are having 1.5% of total token in public sale, 4.5% private sale, 5% in seed, 15% for the team, 5% is going to go for liquidity, 16% is going to go for community, all the, you know, view to earn component and staking. 7% would be for partnerships that they're building and early supporters of the project. 6% for advisors. 20% marketing and 20% for treasury. Now, the pricing and how it works, the earliest round has been 0 0.02 cents. So two cents per token. And they've raised a million dollars. The vesting for it is going to be two and a half percent on token generation event and the month lockup. And after that, there's gonna be a daily vesting for 16 months. So you get like 7% per month, I guess. In terms of the private sale round, the second round was um, at three cents. 5% unlocked on the token generation event. And then the rest of it would be around 11% per month and the so it's 12 months so it's going to be eight percent per month and the raise was 1.35 million dollars public sale is going for seven hundred thousand dollars of fundraising it's going to be not going to be 100 percent a token generation event uh, from what i know is it's going to be three months so i think this one they need to fix the slide but basically it's going to be 25% on the token generation event, which is the TGE. And then you're going to get another 25% monthly, which is a daily linear. So you can claim at any time that you want. So the public has that advantage that you can take your tokens earlier if you want to utilize them or trade them. Seed gets a half price. 
but they <clears throat> have to be with the project for two years. Now, the fully diluted market cap is 40 million, which is not low, it is a bit high, but having said that, because the project is already with a product, it's already working, and also it's in the movie industry, it is gonna, I think, do quite well. There's a total of 1 billion tokens, an initial market cap for the project is going to be around 300,000, 315,000. So it's quite small. And in terms of the other rounds, the schedule is six months cliff for the team. And there is a five months cliff for partners, one week cliff for the earning and streaming services, basically. So there is a relatively strict locking for the team members to make sure their vested interests they have. And this is the release that the whole token basically is going to be a four-year plan until everything is going to be in circulation after four years. And we can also have a look at what are the competitors that they have. So if you look, they've got Audios, Theta Network, and Veracity, and market caps ranging, again, might change because the market is changing every day. but ranging between $400 million to $1.5 billion. So the smallest one is already a 10x higher than the fully diluted value of this project. So that's just showing how much capacity this can have. And this, remember, RightStream already has a working product and proven proof of concept, basically. Now, the next part would be to have a look at the team and backers. And you can see the team and backers in the website, you can see it on the white paper. It's actually very open. So let's look at the partners first. They've got partners that are in the movie industry. So TCL, you probably know. They've got New Films International. They've got uh, Bridgestone Media Group. They've got Arabic uh, Telemedia Group, Motion Pictures, and High Octane Pictures, Shoreline Entertainment. So they've got basically the media components from different um, companies basically involved. And that's what you need for a streaming service. And then they've got the traditional blockchain investors like Engine Network is behind them, Altcoin Buzz who are behind them as well, Metaverse Capital, Engine Starter and the Blockchain Society. So they've got the mix of having the traditional investment partners from the movie and streaming services plus the investors that you need for fundraising in the blockchain industry, because that's equally important in my opinion. Now, the team is quite experienced and you can check everything in LinkedIn. So the CEO himself is an entrepreneur, founder of the Imagine TV. I'm gonna quickly show you that you can search as well. And All Rights is the one I was mentioning to you earlier in terms of the media ecosystem that he's already running since July 2017, you can go to their website, allrights.com and see how it works. And his background is in telco before that. And um, also he had a media entertainment imagine group. So he has been in this industry for many, many years. And now he's bringing this into blockchain. He's worked with Fox, Netflix, and he's an Emmy Awards nominee as well. Sold shows to 50 plus countries. The CTO is an entrepreneur and worked with Seven Network in Australia, National Geographic, Fox, and Editor as well. Again, you can see his background here as well. He worked also with All Rights and other streaming companies. So he has the background required for this project. Eddie is the studio partnerships and he worked with Disney, Fox, CNN, NBC, and Turner. The CCO has worked with Fashion TV and has been the creative officer for 12 years in there. So that's the fashion industry as well in terms of the media. The CRO has worked with more of the news companies and Business Week and Bloomberg as well. Lucas is someone from Blockchain Australia. A lot of the members are based in Australia and Singapore actually for the project and some in the US. Um, the CMO, Chief Marketing Officer, is worked in US and Australia with companies like St. George, JP Morgan, and Charles Shaw. So he has the finance background as well. And 
they've got actually a detailed background on who are the advisors as well if someone is interested to see and this is available in their website as well so everything is very transparent they've got people from startup companies people from um, consulting industries people from crypto like shisha finance and qualitants and people who are giving them the advice for venture partnership they've got the blockchain funders fund as well so they've got basically a mix of startup investors stock market investors media industry um, as well as the crypto industry experts in their board of advisory so they've got all the covering that you need if, if you want to have a successful project on blockchain for moving streaming service now in terms of the social media activity that they've got let's have a look they've got a discord with seventeen thousand members they're on linkedin as well eight around eight thousand members in the announcement channel and much more in the actual telegram group where you can chat now they've got 40,000 members and these are, I checked, they're all organic and active. There are 40,000 members in the Twitter group and Twitter channel basically. And as you can see, they're always doing AMAs or doing active giveaways because they want to have as many people joining as possible. And again, I checked to make sure it's not bot, it's real. And yeah, I can confirm they are real. In terms of the launch pads, they've got three partnerships. So they've got um, Oxpool, they've got Engine Starter, and they've got uh, VLaunch. So VLaunch was actually announced today, I think. And VLaunch, for those of you who are interested, is a launch pad that's um, MM Crypto, more crypto, and a few other uh, big influencers have developed it. And it's more of a community driven influencer backed launchpad and the model they have is basically by having the vlaunch tokens and staking the tokens you get airdrops of the tokens for that project and by getting those airdrops um, you're basically basically getting free allocations so that's usually what they've been doing and it's really super popular so it's a good marketing activity to do in terms of the and let's be launch basically oxpool i don't cover them much but they're a really good launchpad as well and engine starter is my default launchpad that i cover so with engine starter they're gonna have an ido and the dates are subject to change i cannot guarantee as you know things change right now with the uh, problems we have in the crypto industry and also the war situation with russia and ukraine but if we stick to this schedule the private raise is going to be on the 6th of March. This is going to be only for Multiverse Club. Those are staking for 999 days and the farmers, which I covered in my previous video, how you can participate in that. So they're going to raise for the exclusive club members uh, around 150K worth of um, private round. It's going to be on the 6th of March. And on the 7th of March, you will have $200,000 worth of the IDO round for everyone who has already staked their tokens in the staking platform for NG Starter based on the tier you qualify for. So that's $200,000 worth of uh, right stream at four cents in terms of allocation. And the vesting is going to be 25% per month. And you can always register and be a part of this one, basically. So that's the coverage for the launch pad. In terms of the market sentiment, look, the sentiment is impacted heavily by the war now. And it has recovered quite well, actually, to be fair. But still, I cannot predict the market because we, we had a big issue with this war. And we previously had other issues like the Fed increasing the rate heights and also end of last year, we had, you know, end of the year and people trying to, you know, save, send some money, you know, for Christmas shopping and all that. So it's it's really tough to predict what's going to happen. And you do you do see some movements like Terra has gone up by 50% in the last seven days. So you do see these, uh, you know, big movements suddenly also happening. 
and I, I guess with Terra is because of the um, stablecoin support as well, the UST. But it is difficult to predict where we are heading in terms of the next few months. What I can say is entertainment industry, the movie industry is something that people would be even more interested to watch. And this is the right time to have a project like Rightstream. So I am quite bullish on the project, but I cannot give any financial advice in terms of your investment. I will be investing and I have invested in the project and I highly recommend you. Now, if you want to participate early in the early round, I do recommend you to either use VLaunch or Oxpool or Engine Starter as your preferred launchpad because there's plenty of time over 10 days to research the project and see if you can get involved via one of the launch pads. If you have any question as well, put it down in the comment section or contact me via my email and I'll be trying to assist you or, or you can come to my Telegram group. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you stay safe. See you next time.